Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali 17. In the last episode, the party had resolved the dragon issue and returned safely to Red Bluffs. For two weeks, they spent time resting and recuperating from their injuries while organizing the recovery mission for the silver previously delivered to the dragon. With the missing ore returned to the Bayo, Grish was about to confront the local ruler when the party received a notice from King Pellet ordering them to return to Saydown for a report. We rejoin our group as they stand before the Denali monarch finishing up their account on the matters on the western coast. And so, through the combined efforts of everyone, including Grish, said Sir Omel, we were able to defeat the foul worm and bring about peace to your holdings in the west. Listening intently, the monarch sat back on his throne, clapping and nodding in approval. Well done! Well done indeed, adventurers! That was a very impressive account. I see some of your injuries have not completely healed, though. No, your majesty, replied Yolanda Two Blades. The caustic nature of the dragon's breath has permanently scarred several of us. With a look of concern, the monarch scowled for that. I am truly sorry. You have served the people and deserve to be rewarded. Smiles crossed the group's face until the region continued. I will certainly honor our agreement, but it seems that we still have questions, don't we? Who is this mysterious Garmin? And what of the dangerous Nykoloth business? Clearly, we still have a mystery on our hands. Does this mean we won't be getting paid, your highness? asked Phidias the gnome. The king boomed out laughter and shook his head. No, that isn't what I meant at all, brave soul. You will all be getting paid. We are a grateful people, and you have earned it. Brother Stance piped up with a milord. What exactly do you need from us? A good question, monk. We still need answers. I was wondering, would it be possible for you to continue adventure into the Northlands to find this nobleman who sold off his daughter and resolved the issue? Harris the mage seemed perplexed and spoke up. Uh, King Pellet, uh, not to be rude, but you do realize that the woman was only an illusion and didn't really exist. Of course, of course I do, but that seems to be our only solid clue left. Certainly this Nykoloth creature would have had some type of background to cover its tracks. You don't believe that it was just an outright lie that a northern noble may somehow play into it, do you? The group stood in awkward silence for a few moments until Sir Omel cleared his throat. So, <clears throat> in essence, you want us to confirm that the nobleman's story was just a ruse? The king jumped to his feet and pointed at the armored knight. Exactly, Sir Knight. You've got it. I knew you were intelligent. I will gather your reward, and by the time you return with what I'm sure is just a wild goose chase, your wealth will be significantly enhanced. I will even send Grish with you, as it seems you have formed a partnership. What say you, Captain of the Guards? Your order is my pleasure, Your Highness, responded the cleric. See, said the king, all settled. I will have a boat made ready for your departure in the morning, and in the meantime, you will not want for food or drink until then. The party looked at each other puzzled until the king waved them out with his hand. The group moved out of the throne room, but the king added, Captain, a word with you, please. Sir Omel turned to the large Zenobian, who nodded, and advised he would catch up to them in a few minutes. The rest of the guards were excused from the room, and the king ordered Grish in front of him. Kneeling at the throne, the cleric responded with a, Yes, your highness, who may this humble? But was cut short as the king grew angry. Did I or did I not expressly tell you that these delvers were supposed to handle the problem? You did, my lord, was the response. Well, good, for a moment I thought I had grown insane. 
it would appear that you have played a rather significant part in this... this... this mess! As he threw up his hands. Yes, my lord, I may have exceeded my participation in... but was cut off again. May? May have exceeded? I would say you most certainly exceeded it. You have uncovered a weakness in my rulership, courtesy of the Bayo, and now these foreigners have a lower opinion of my ability to handle the operation of our country. What if they are spies sent here to discover our weaknesses? I would say they have found two. Two, responded Grish. Yes, two. I have an inept governor in the western lands, and the captain of my guards cannot follow simple instructions. Two. What do you have to say for yourself, Zenobian? <sighs> my lord, it was never my intention to bring shame upon our country. I do not believe that these individuals are spies, but rather, they have helped us root out the problem in Red Bluffs and laid their lives on the line to assist us. Assist us? boomed the king. They did it for money, cleric. Nothing more, nothing less. If the dragon had paid them off, they would be fighting us at this point. Grish bowed his head humbly with a meek, Yes, my lord, please forgive me. Pellet exhaled loudly and shook his head. Get up, Grish. The exasperated king continued. I've always trusted your judgment in the past. However, if you continue to ignore my commands, that will quickly end. Yes, my lord, replied the Zenobian. Get the group to agree to go north and seek out this noble that may or may not exist. As well, search for a different problem. Different problem, sire? Pellet returned to his chair and leaned forward. I've received information that a thief has stolen the heart of the golem. Surprised and wide-eyed, Grish stammered out, The golem in the harbor? Nodding, the king continued. In your absence, the thief climbed in through an access port and was able to escape on a small ship leaving the harbor. Last reports were that the boat headed towards the Northlands. I don't believe that there is a mystery noble there, but I do think that there is a thief with a piece of our main defense there. You and your new friends need to move north and find this thief. Once the heart is recovered, I don't care what you do to the Delvers, but you will return immediately with the artifact. Do you understand me, Grish? Bowing deeply, the cleric nodded. Go now, my friend, and do not tell your associates of this matter. If they are spies, now would be an excellent time to take advantage of our nation's weakness. I understand, my king, said Grish, as he spun around and marched out of the throne room. A thin smile crossed the monarch's face. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.